Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, it's me again Chelsea and today I am going to be doing a bit of a TBR. I know, shocker, I haven't done one for ages. This is much more of an MBR, I can't guarantee what I'm actually going to read. I am all over the place at the minute with my reading. I'm not reading an awful lot. Um, the books I won't talk about in this video are the Spiffbo books that I need to read. I'm in the midst of one right now as I'm filming this. Um, there will be video reviews coming for some of them as we go throughout the competition but that's not for now. <laughs> I'm taking part in no tours. Um, I do have a buddy read with my friend Kate but we do prompt things so I think the prompt for this month, let me double check because I really planned terribly for this video. Um, the prompt for this month was new from author, so a new book from an author that we have previously read from. We're going to read separate books because that's just what we do. Um, we don't necessarily read the same things and I'm sure one of these things that I'm going to talk about will actually count keep up with my vlogs which I'm hoping to get back into to see what I actually end up reading but we're gonna just go through my goodreads I literally have my goodreads here we're gonna go through what I have still got sat on my currently reading list and we're gonna talk about it and hopefully manage to get some of these finished because I don't really want to go into next year with a full stack of books with bookmarks in so this month I'm either going to be reading these books or DNFing them whether that means I'm DNFing because I'm not enjoying them and getting rid of or if it means I'm just going to soft DNF, that's just going to be something we do. So the first one on this list is actually Children of Time. I started reading this. We're going to do dates and everything for this. I started reading this back in July and I am just over 100 pages in. I quite like this book so far. However, my problem with it, which is not, it kind of is a problem. And I think it's what has driven me to kind of put it down especially at the minute is that Adrian's writing is amazing I love his sci-fis however sometimes they're a little bit too technical for me and recently I have not been in the headspace of difficult reading and sometimes that is what his sci-fis are this one's really interesting you're following from a perspective of a spider as well as humans I think if I remember correctly um it's all very in it's all very interesting I don't know an awful lot I'm 100 pages in and I kind of need to refresh myself but what I do remember is that there was this whole experiment where they were going to release uh monkeys onto this specific planet and release something that would accelerate their uh evolution process but someone sabotaged the mission and they released the monkeys but they got killed off in space but they did drop the evolution speeder upper thing very technical i know and it has impacted the species that were already on this planet because earth is dying and the humans want to move to this planet and they were using the monkeys to see if it was possible to live there so portia is a spider and she has been you know affected by this evolution and we're just constantly following this portia character but i believe it's like in the generational term so every Porsche isn't necessarily the same as the first one that was affected by this evolution thing but obviously it's speeding up the evolution of these spiders so it's very interesting I just don't know if it's going to be something that I continue to read because like I said not reading the difficult books at the minute however I would like to continue with this because I, I am interested you know I do love a good sci-fi I just haven't been in the sci-fi mood recently um the next one on my currently reading list is actually one by an indie author and that is Gold Lock and Key by EJ Dobble I started reading this one back in September 2023 actually um so even longer this is a really short book uh it's 85 pages long according to goodreads and i still haven't finished it it is a grim dark retelling of a fairy tale of goldilocks and the three bears and i don't know why i haven't finished it 
I just haven't. I think I got distracted and I would like to finish that. That would be an easy one to finish because I don't actually think... I think I'm over 50% in it. I just need to finish it. Then I've got a couple of arcs that I was very kindly sent um, that I fell off the wagon for. The first up was Grievous Blood and as I was actually making space on this memory card I found the video about needing to finish this book. So I started this 28th of December last year. It's been almost a whole year and I haven't actually finished it. Um, this I am on 112 pages in and I was very recently sent the third book in the series, Black Light Born. Um, I believe this is the third and final book. I'm not a thousand percent sure, but I was very kindly sent this. Thank you very much, Orbit, for sending me a copy of this. So I do need to get my butt in gear and finish this one so I can continue with the series and give you guys my thoughts and feelings because that is not out yet. I believe it's out very soon. I wanna say 5th of December. The third book releases i'm gonna tell you because i have the paperwork 5th of december yeah is when it is going to release and it is the conclusion so this is the third and final book in this series so i definitely need to like i said finish the book finish grievous blood so i can get to the third book and tell you guys all about it and how i found it this is also an amazing thing because the first book combat codes was actually in spiffbo years ago and it has officially been picked up by orbit which is so cool to see an indie book picked up by publishing like the big publishing houses which happens more often than i realize um it's the same for the lost war as well this was also in spiffbo and it's got picked up again by orbit so this is a really cool like martial arts book. I will say the fantasy is kind of loosely there. It's not magical in the sense of like magic powers and all those sorts of typical fantastical things. There are no wizards, uh, there are no dragons, but it is fantastical in the sense of these fighters fighting these different rings and they're made of different elements and these different elements make you experience different things very interesting very cool so definitely worth checking out the first book i'm gonna read the second book and hopefully the third book maybe this month so i can tell you more about it and whether it's a trilogy that i recommend and then another one that has recently released its sequel as well is gog magog by jeff noon and steve beard i was sent this by angry robot thank you very much angry robot um i've got a finished copy of both the first book and the second book and i need to finish this one in order to get to the second book i started this back in february i am over 100 pages in this seems to be the common theme as i get to like just over 100 pages and then for some reason get distracted and pick something else up or i think it's because i kind of overload myself at the minute that seems to be what i have done this year this year i have overloaded myself with reviews and competitions and stuff and I want to get better at that next year that's a resolution just like a sneak peek into that sort of content but this is really interesting we are following our main character katie who is um used to be a captain and she used to sail up and down this river called the nissus river and the nisus river i can never pronounce it i'm very sorry however um she is old now she's retired and this strange couple come up to her and request that she takes them down the river and it's so interesting because this river has got so many different fantastical things through it and no one could nav navigate it like katie could and that is why they've come to her so i am at the point now where we're out where we're on the boat i just need to experience the rest of it <laughs> which i plan to uh very soon so we will get there we will get them. You can't tell what this is because I took the dust jacket off, but this is actually If We Were Villains by ML Rio, which is their first book that I wanted, that I owned. Um, I am not even 100 pages in, 62 pages into this, and I started this back again in February. This was a buddy read I was meant to read with Kate. I don't think she, I think she ended up DNFing it. I don't think she finished it. And I obviously haven't either. It is just sat on my shelf and I am enjoying the premise of this and I really do want to finish it. And this is following our main character, Oliver, who has served 10 years in jail for some crime. Um, 
which was a murder which he may or may not have committed and we are reflecting back on his experience at this school which was an elite college for Shakespeare and acting and he was with I believe it was seven other people yeah he no he's one of seven young actors studying at this college and one of them dies and obviously I don't know which one because I haven't even made it to the halfway mark yet so I really want to I really want to experience that. It's dark academia, it's perfect for this time of year, I just need to finish it. Which is the theme, actually, for this whole video. The next two books I can't really hold up because they are buried down there and I'm actually reading them on my Kindle, but I want to finish the Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn tandem read by Sarah J Maas. I have got this all sorted on my Kindle, which is very cool. Um, I want to finish this series this year. This is such an unattainable TBR. <laughs> there are so many books on this list and so many of them are so chunky, but I do. I want to finish these books. I don't really think I'm that far in at all. I think I'm on chapter 10 of like both or something similar like that. Um, of god knows how many chapters in both books. These are chunky books and I started them ages ago. When did I start them? Let's have a look. Uh, I started these back in March and yeah I want to cross these off. I want to finish them or at least finish them to the point where I only have Kingdom of Ash left to read and I can read that early next year and Throne of Glass is finished because I want to finish Throne of Glass before I go into Akatar. Yes I do want to read Akatar. I have all the books on my shelf. I, ugh, my friend is loving them. I don't know if I'm gonna love them as much because as we all know say it with me, I'm not a romance girly. We know this, but I want to experience it because there is obviously so much hype for the Akatar series. I have them on my shelves. I need to read them because otherwise, why are they sat on my shelves? And I think now that my friend has finished book two as well, I very much want to catch up with her so I can talk to her about this series. This is the first very popular series that I think she's read that I also have an interest in reading. She is very much a crime reader, or she used to be, um, and I am not. So it's very cool that we can now talk about these things, because that's what I want to do. I want to talk about books with my friend. Um, and I don't want to do that without finishing Throne of Glass, because I feel as though all I see online is people reading Akatar first and then reading Throne of Glass and saying, well, Throne of Glass is nowhere near as good. Now, I feel like Throne of Glass, this is a very weird tangent, so if you don't care, feel free to skip ahead. But I feel like Throne of Glass is going to be my favourite out of the two because it's less spice, more world building, more that sort of thing, from what I've heard. I can't really tell you the ins and outs because I've not read the Akatar series. I've read the first book. But I feel like reading it in the Throne of Glass first, which is the YA series, and then going into Akatar is the better way to do it. Personally for me. Not necessarily for everyone else, but just for me, you know? So yeah, I want to at least finish those two. That was a very big tangent. The other one is also buried down there, so I'm just going to talk about it. The next one is The Grace of Kings, which was originally going to be part of It's All About Fantasy that I hosted with Lisa. But she did not get on with it and she was never going to carry on with the series so we just didn't have the series. I want to read it and I believe she's going to try it again because the audiobooks, if you did not know, are finally coming to the UK and they are releasing at the start of December or like mid-December. So I have pre-ordered Grace of Kings so I can listen to it and hopefully I will finish it by the end of the year. Um, and I started this back in April and... Then they're releasing the other four up until like mid-January next year, I think. So if I want to continue with the whole series audibly, I can, which is very cool. I'm, I'm excited. Another one I need to finish is The Storm Beneath the World by Michael R. Fletcher. I was very kindly sent a copy of this book to review and I just haven't, again, had the brain power to finish this book. I haven't had the brain power to finish any of these books. It's been strange. I was so motivated at the start of the year. I wanted to hit 100 books and it is not the case. But uh, yeah, I want to start this. I started it in June. This is a really cool fantasy book where we're actually following like insects. They are the main characters. And it is, it's very interesting. It's very, I'm gonna have to read you the blurb because I can't describe it. So it's Cursed by the Gods, the Insectile 
Ashkaro live on flying islands, travelling the eternal river of days while a hellish firestorm devours the world below. Collected into queendoms, the higher caste brights live in the luxurious windward rainforest while the servile dulls scrape out a desperate existence in the leeward Lee Ward Desert. Conflicts escalate between two neighbouring queendoms, where Nish embraces a modern ideals of equality and independence, Yil honours the fallen goddess by enslaving their neighbours and maintaining traditional castes. In preparation for the imminent war, Nish sends Ashkaro youths with dangerous talents to secret schools, training them as assassins and spies. Joa, a dull male with a talent for suggestion, and Ak... A, bril a bright female with a talent for stealth are torn from their fam families and thrown into the academy. The two naively believe that the biggest threat comes from the other students, not realising the war has already begun. United in purpose, divided by caste, they can only save the island from the Mad Queen by working together. It's really interesting and what I've read so far it is really interesting to see the brights and the dolls like kind of interact with each other and the brights being so much more in the sense that they are better than you and they can do anything that they want to the dolls and just kind of get away with it which I don't like but that's just one of the things that I've experienced reading this book. You can't tell what this is maybe from this this is Bonesmith daughter? No just Bonesmith I am getting this confused with Bone Shard. Uh, this is Bonesmith. This is some cross between Gideon and something else. It does say uh, Gideon the Ninth meets Game of Thrones White Walkers, which is a YA dark fantasy. Our main character is striving to basically fight and she fails a test, so she gets exiled to the edge of their territory, essentially. I am 84 pages in and I want to finish this because I believe, I don't know if it's already on sale or if I've missed it, maybe I've missed it, um, but the second book was going to come out at some point and I was going to see if I wanted to order the next one. Oh, it already came out, it came out in August um, so that I could try and get the Froelich matching edition. Um, but it's also on my shelf, so I want to try it to see if I would like it and carry on with the series. We're going to strive to still finish it to see how I feel. Um, is the long and short of this. So maybe we'll read this in December. I might have moved slightly, I'm not sure. Uh, next up is Butter, which is officially Waterstone's book of the year, which I think a lot of people have been saying, like, I don't know why it is, but I think it's just based on how many people have bought this book. Like, I don't really think it's based on ratings. Anyways, this is a contemporary book, <laughs> there's no magic in here, following a journalist who is trying to interview this killer who has been locked up in Tokyo's detention centre for being a serial killer of businessmen in Tokyo, apparently killing them and luring them in with her cooking. So, you know, it's... It is interesting. I heard good. I've I've heard good things about this book. I was recommended it by someone Jack works with. They were reading it as well, and I am just struggling because it's slow. It is so slow. Of course, it's slow. It's not got any magic in it. Um, but yeah, we're just talking about buttered noodles and stuff. So I need to finish this so that I can at least say I have read a Waterstone's best book of the year, and um see how I like it. I feel like when it get further in I will enjoy it more but just currently it's dragging its heels a little bit too much for me. Then we have a book that I've very kindly been sent by an author. I was meant to read this in August but unfortunately I just like I've fallen off my wagon massively reading wise and that is Witch Hazel by T.C. Roberts Finn and I have started it. I am really intrigued. Before in a vlog it feels very much Witcher-esque to me in the sense that it's kind of broken up into short stories of different things that this character goes through. They slay monsters, similar to The Witcher, um, and I believe that's part of the selling point. Yeah, inspired by The Witcher, Blade Runner and Bloodborne, Witch Hazel begins an episodic story of Caleb Slow, a pilgrim for the Temple of the Moon, as he traverses a life of violence, demons and corruption. I need to finish this. I am enjoying it, I just, I'm really not finishing things um, and if I can actually finish all these books imagine how good my final uh, numbers will look on Goodreads and in my journal. <laughs> Not that I read for numbers but it also does make me feel like I've accomplished a lot when I have read a chunk of things 
during the year. And I do also want to have read a vast majority of the books that are on my TBR because these shelves are full. And um, yeah, I need to do a new, a new spreadsheet, but and a new physical TBR, which will come in the new year. Do not worry about that. So that's another one I need to finish. Recently, I've also had a few things from my library. So I am currently listening to The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle audibly, and I'm not sure if it is the way for me to read this. However, I am enjoying it. It's really interesting. So this is, our main character is Aidan Bishop. However, I am so thrown because I feel like from the start, we don't know who this man is. Um, he just wakes up in the body of someone that is most clearly not him. And he has to figure out who has murdered Evelyn Hardcastle. That's basically his thing. He changes bodies every day, I want to say. Yes, every time the day begins again, Aiden wakes up in the body of a different guest and someone is desperate to stop him ever escaping Blackheath. And there is also described that some of the guests that he embodies are very helpful and help him figure some stuff out and some just really aren't. So I am not very far into this at all. I think I'm on the second day and it's, it's something. I'm, I am enjoying it. I just don't know if this is the correct way for me to read this. I might swap over to physical but it just became available on my library so I downloaded it. And saying that, the other one that has also become available via my library is Januaries by Olive e. Blake. This is literally just a compilation of short stories set into the four different months of the year. And I will say I read some reviews while going into this because I seem to do that now at the minute I seem to read certain reviews and some people really have slated this and I feel as though I just am experiencing that these relationships because let's be honest most of these stories are probably going to have relationships in just are a little bit bad and wrong have red flags as most things do but it's actually really easy to listen to and I am enjoying that aspect of it. I feel like Olivia Blake's writing as much as I enjoyed, I really, really enjoyed Atlas Six because of the Dark Academia. The, what was the other one that I read? Masters, not Masters of Death, I didn't read that. One for My Enemy, which was like a Romeo and Juliet rent kind of retelling. I did enjoy it. I just, I'm not always 100% engaged in her writing. But this is just like a compilation of loads of short stories so if that's not your thing and you know that you don't do short stories don't read this because you won't enjoy it i'm enjoying just reading some of these like short stories if i'm completely honest i think it's interesting i am currently i think it's on this one i think i'm on to make a man which is a short story about a man who <laughs> to make a man it's a short story about a man um a gent who is like a prize fighter and he has this woman turn around to him one day and go in a year's time if you don't change your ways you're gonna die and it's following him throughout the year as he's apparently trying to change his ways so it's really interesting and most of them do have like really weird sad things um but i'm enjoying it it's it's enjoyable you know it's one of those like almost as people describe like popcorn reads i feel like this is that like I don't read a lot of romance. This is mainly focused on like people falling in love or like lust and stuff. But it is also looking at other aspects of people. And I find that really interesting. So I want to finish this this month. And then the final book that I want to finish is none other than Lightfall by Ed Crocker. I was very kindly sent an advanced reader copy by the author himself. So thank you very much again, Ed, for this. This is just a world of vampires, werewolves, and sorcerers. And then there is this thing called the Greys that just came out of nowhere and they wiped out half the population in one night and they're like battling them continuously. I have literally just started this. I'm like 10 pages in. So I don't know anything at the minute, but I want to read this. This comes out in January next year. So I need to make sure that I have this read ready for um, that release date because I, like I said, next year is the year I get my stuff together and I, I read <laughs> and finish things. But I also do have some other things that are like on an MBR for me because of course, 
course I do. And mainly they're only like small books. The first one is the other ML Rio book that I own, which is Graveyard Shift. I still can't believe how small this book is for how much it cost, um, but that's by the by. Um, this is a really short story and it's set in October so I feel like I've missed the boat a little bit with this but I want to read it because it is so small and just read it and see if I like it because Emma Rio actually has another book coming out next year which I have not pre-ordered purely for the fact that I was like well I don't know I don't know I need to read the two that I own I love how Olive e. Blake is on the back of this as well I need to read the two books that I own and I can go from there. And then the other one is uh, none other than Spectacular by Stephanie Garber, which is set in the Coraval world. But this is a Christmassy thing. And I'm, ugh, I'm excited. I do like the Coraval books. I enjoyed the first one, as I've said before, way more than I enjoyed any of the others. Um, but I want to read this and I feel like it's gonna be like festive this will be the only festive book that I actually own because I don't really read themed books unless they are like you know murder mystery things set in October but otherwise yeah so that is my massive stack of books and I'm not even going to attempt to hold up all of them because I will drop some but that is the list of books and the current and the state of my currently reading list at the minute I'm currently reading I can't math right now. So I currently have 16 books on the go, which is actually pretty good for me, if I'm completely honest, because usually it's way more than that. And then obviously there's some other ones that I want to throw in as well. And I might completely go rogue. I might read something completely different. I don't know, but I do want to kind of get through some of these or DNF them so I start next year on a clean slate. So that's the plan. But this has been a very long TBR video or MBR video, whatever you want to call this. So thank you so much for sticking with me. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a like, really support me and my channel. Leave me a comment down below of something that you're hoping to read in the month of December. If you just want to leave me an emoji, leave me any Christmas tree emojis because my Christmas tree is officially up. So it is festive season. And if you want to see more of me, please consider subscribing down below and ring that notification bell to get notified every single time I upload new videos. I will be uploading this month a short every day and I will also be taking that short and putting it on Instagram for people who, like, don't watch on this platform. Anyways, um, that's by the by. So that will be my Vlogmas and I will be doing it exactly the same as I did last year. I'll be posting from the 2nd of December, which when this video goes up will be a couple of days in from the 2nd of December until the 25th of December. So we will be like a day behind. So on the 2nd, I'll upload the 1st of December and so on and so forth. And I have got some very exciting things planned. I am going to Lapland for a portion of December and I'm going to see like the Panto and I want to, you know, also do other things, but there are gonna be some dull days where I'm literally just sat at home or sat in an office working, but I do want to strive to make the tail end of December the best content because I'm just so excited to capture Lapland I think it's going to be so exciting and I'm going to go get a facial and all these fun things so I'm just going to document December and see where we get to but yeah that is everything for this video I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you soon in the next one bye <laughs>